Hi. In today's video, let's take a look at, at another digital microscope that is specifically designed for circuit work. This one was sent in to me from Endonstar for an honest review. The version I got here is an AD208, which features an 8.5 inch LCD screen, and that is quite big. Price wise, it is currently on sale for just over $100. If after watching this video you decide to get one, you can use the link and coupon code provided in the video description below, and it will save you $10. Like I said in my last digital microscope review video, the stability of the platform is absolutely essential given the significant magnifications involved. You can see that this scope has a rather large metal stand and is definitely top heavy, so it won't tip over easily. Of course, looks can be deceiving. We will power it on shortly and see how well it works. But before powering it on, I wanted to mention a couple of things that you might find important. The first one is that this microscope is USB powered, obviously, but uh, it only comes with a cable and uh, it does not provide you with an USB power adapter. Nowadays, everyone should already have quite a few 5 volts adapters lying around, so it should not be a major problem. Another thing is that although this microscope can be powered by a single 18650 lithium ion cell, it again does not come with one. And it would not accept a typical flat top lithium ion battery either. As you can see in the picture here, the anode contact does not protrude far enough out, so it will not make contact with your typical flat top battery. Of course, you can get batteries with pointy tops and those should fit in with no problem. If you are using a battery, the current draw is at around 700 milliamps when I measured earlier, so that it will give you an idea of the runtime depending on the capacity of the battery you choose. It comes with a combo USB cable and with a built-in inline control. You can use the cable to power both the microscope and control the brightness of the two gooseneck lights. I'm not particularly fond of this design as it's quite clunky. The good news is that you can just use a standard USB cable to power the microscope only if you are not using the auxiliary lights. Now I do wish they put a shutter control on this inline remote so that you don't have to press the on-screen buttons when taking pictures as touching the screen could cause it to shake and blur the image. By the way, I really like the matte finish screen instead of a glossy screen so you don't see your reflection when it's powered off. Also, this scope comes with these spring-tensioned clips that can be fastened onto the base itself through these two mounting holes. They're designed to hold down samples when you are using the microscope to view them. For doing circuit work, I don't think those clips are necessary as they just get in your way on this board. I'd rather have this large working area to deal with than having those clips on, but it's your choice. And now I just have power it on and also put a circuit board underneath so you can look at it at what the magnification we're talking about here. So this is at a maximum height. As you can see, the magnification is certainly excellent here. And of course, as mentioned earlier, you can use the button here to fine tune the gooseneck light brightness. And uh, of course, you cannot totally turn it off. If you do want to turn it off, you can unplug the power supply to the gooseneck light at the backup unit here. And the good news is this unit can just be powered by the USB cable. You don't really need the lights to make it functioning. There is also a ring light around the microscope lens, and you can control its brightness via the control located at the front panel, which is uh, very convenient. With the ring light and the two gooseneck lights, you should really have no problem getting the exact lighting needed for your picture. One thing I like about this microscope is that the focus adjustment is right on the lens itself. And you can see that the adjustment is very, very smooth. And uh, you can fine tune it to make a very, very sharp image. So that is certainly a very important factor when considering a digital microscope like this one. Another nice touch is that the display actually can be tilted and also rotated. That's because it has a slippering design so that when it's fashioned, you can still rotate it relatively easily. 
This microscope also utilizes a very similar stand as the one we reviewed last time of that uh, G1200. As you can see here, this stand can not only tilt forward, but also can be tilted backward. So that is very useful, depends on the shape of uh, orientation of the target you are viewing. And also sometimes if there is a glare in the background, you can use this technique to get rid of that glare. The inclusion of these gooseneck lights are certainly very helpful, as sometimes the markings on the chips are not really readily visible. For example, if I turn off the lights here, and you can't really see the markings that clearly. So that definitely is a very handy feature when you are trying to identify the chips on the board. And you can fine tune the angles to get a clearer picture, depends on what you are looking at. One thing I noticed, I'm not sure if you can see, is that the update rate of this uh, digital microscope is not as great as some of the ones I have seen before. And in that, when you are moving the board around rapidly, you can see this wobbling artifacts. But that wobbling effect should not affect you doing live soldering. As you can see here, if I'm just uh, placing my soldering iron here, it doesn't really have any noticeable lag, which is very good. And just want to give you a sense of how much working space we're talking about here. Right now, I have the microscope adjusted to the highest position. And you can see that we have roughly above 10 centimeters of working distance, which is actually excellent. So if you remove the board at the bottom, we're talking about roughly 11 centimeters of working space here. And that is actually adequate. But if you compare this with the must tool microscope review last time, that one actually came in as 12 centimeters. So that one gave you a little bit more working room. So now let's take a look at how much adjustment range and the focusing range we have on this microscope. So let me try to zoom in onto a small portion of the board. And I'm going to roll this down and uh, let's see. So we want it to focus on somewhere here. And of course, right now you can't see, I'm going to uh, change the focus so that we can see. And we can see that we do have a very wide range of uh, focus. This one we need to turn it up a little bit. So that's the closest we can get. And you can see no problem. We can see a lot of details on the board. This close range is very useful when you are inspecting the solder joints and uh, also the traces to see if there's any defect. So that's a very, very handy. And now I just want to give you some perspective of the field of view. So at its highest position, you can see that we have a little bit over three centimeters to work with. And now we're at the maximum optical magnification, and you can see that field of view is just over three millimeters. And of course, this uh, microscope also has digital zoom, so you can use that to zoom it out even further. For instance, you can see that with a maximum digital zoom, you're talking about just shy of a one millimeter. One thing I have to say though is that these buttons are actually very confusing. But if you read the manual, they are actually clearly spelled out and they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Now I just want to show you some inconsistencies here. We have these two buttons here for taking pictures and recording. Now you can't probably see what the markings are on the button because of the black background. But this button here is for taking pictures. Now this button only works when you are actually in recording videos. So you press OK to start video recording and then you can use this button to grab a still frame inside that video recording session. But if you are in say camera mode, which is uh, you press this to change into, then you can only use this OK to take pictures. And now you can see we're right now in camera mode. You notice that the resolution actually changed. Well, not necessarily the resolution, but that the magnification changed. And in the picture mode, there's no way for me to change the magnification. So not entirely sure why the default magnification for the picture mode is different than that in the video mode. But also another artifact is that in video mode, everything looks uh, normal. But if we're in picture mode, you can see that the picture gets stretched. Now, the good news is this is only an artifact on the display. After you take the photo, the photo actually shows up the correct aspect ratio of the image. 
Of course, this is something that uh, I'm sure Endon Star can easily fix in the firmware if they choose to. Now let's take a look at some of the menu options. So for that, I'm going to long press this menu button and it enters this uh, screen. And you can see that we don't have a lot of uh, settings, which makes it very easy to set up. And you can see that all these are really for, I think, geared towards a dash cam rather than a standard uh, microscope camera. But uh, that seems to be the firmware that everybody is using. So I do have another screen here, so I can press this to change to another screen. As you can see, we have the version here is uh, AD208. And you can see the firmware is actually quite recent. It's 2021, May 25th. Wow, that's actually really recent. And uh, we can change the frequency, which right now is set to 60 Hertz for North America. There are other settings you can play around. So that's the manual settings. And by the way, the picture quality from this microscope is actually excellent. I will place a few shots here and you can see it for yourself. And this compared to the must tool one that I did reveal last time is clearly much, much better. Another shortcoming of this microscope is that uh, I notice you cannot import photos directly to the computer via a connected USB cable. You have to take out the SD card and uh, use a card reader to import the photos. When plugged in, this uh, scope does not show up as a mass uh, storage device, which is a little bit disappointing considering some of the much cheaper digital scope like the Must 2 G1200 I reviewed last time actually had this functionality as a standard. At the end of the day, this Endon Star AD208 is a pretty decent digital microscope, despite some of the shortcomings I mentioned in the video. The overall design, such as the smooth focusing adjustment, definitely makes it a pleasure to use. And the image quality is excellent, especially if you compare it to the Must Tool digital scope I reviewed last time. And as a microscope, focus adjustability and image quality are certainly among the top criteria when selecting one and the AD208 shines in both of these areas. I hope you enjoyed the review and please give it a big thumbs up if you liked the video and remember to subscribe to the channel for more review, teardown, and repair videos in the future. I will catch up with you next time.